What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of Burley Fishing. Today, we're talking Ned Rigs. All the Ned Rigs, actually. Not all of them, but most of the Ned Rigs, actually. I've got them all rigged up. We're going to dunk them in the tank. You guys are going to get some underwater footage of how these things look, as well as some of my personal feedback, having experience fishing with them, as far as their durability, their action, and catchability. Do they straight catch dang hogs or not? So you might want to stay tuned for that. Before we get to the big review, if you guys like content like this, unboxings, reviews, comparisons, all that stuff, we do that here on the channel. So consider subscribing to Burly Fishing and smash that like button on this video. Ring that notification bell so you can see when we post more videos. Let's get to it. So first I want to run you through the brands that we'll be working with today. I think I got a pretty nice wide variety for you guys that we can compare in the tank. Then we're gonna tie them on, then we're gonna dunk them in the tank one at a time, and you're gonna see what they look like. And finally, we'll put together some sort of a power ranking so you guys can see maybe my top go-tos. Cool, let's do it. First off, starting this thing off, we've got the newcomers, the Rabid Baits Foxtail. This is a pretty phenomenal bait. I've actually got a full breakdown and review of this over on the Monster Bass YouTube channel that you guys can go check out, go like and subscribe. But essentially we have a plastic with a ton of action and added insane action from this actual fox fur which is molded right into the plastic. So you're going to get a level of action you just can't get out of plastic. This really sets itself apart. So that's Rabid Bay. It's a great finesse plastic there. We've got Lunker Hunt, their new finesse series. In this case I've got a little green pumpkin and orange combo with some black flake in there which i think looks pretty dang good and this one has a flat side to it it's one of the few out there that does this or goes for this type of shape so we got a rounded front worm on the back we got flat with some ridge with some ridges so it's going to give it a little added action so it's going to have eh, a little subtle action in the water but it's you know really tapered tail so i think that looks good and that's going to work in our favor as well then we're going to look at Bass Pro Shops Tournament Series, the Sticko. The Sticko. I picked this color out because it reminds me of my favorite Z-Man color. Thing that kind of surprised me about these is that they're super narrow. This is probably the most narrow worm I've seen as far as Ned Rig worms go. Uh, which, by the way, we're just comparing worm styles today. There are a plethora of other styles out there. There are bug and creature style baits out there as well. Uh, we're just gonna stick with the worms. So we're gonna keep it simple today. This is the worm breakdown, right? So the sticko, as you can see, it's a bit longer and it's very narrow. So it's gonna naturally have a bit more action as you can see there, which is interesting. We're gonna see how it holds up on the bottom. It doesn't look that great butted up to this jig head. Not super stoked about that. We'll see how it looks in the water though. More importantly, then we've got Robo Worm. I heard a lot of good things about these. This is their three inch Ned Worm. These things are juiced up. They're a bit more salty. They're very salty, actually, if you look at it. But here we have, again, a little brown and chartreuse. So it's got like a nice little flash to it. Um, this one is another more of a narrow style, a bit longer than most Ned Rig worms you're going to see. Very tapered at the tail. So it's going to have a decent amount of action. Look at that, right? And it kind of butts up to the head a little bit better than the Sticko from Bass Pro Shops, but still... Pretty narrow at the tip. Very salty. There's salt just falling off of this thing right now. Next up, we got the 10,000 fish Sakoshi bug. One thing you'll notice right off the bat is that these appendages are floppy. We'll see how they handle in the water. Uh, but this is a material that's meant to mimic or compete with the Z-Man Elaztec. So check this out. It's not exactly Elaztec, but it's very similar, very stretchy. Pretty buoyant plastic. This thing should have some good action. I have, with this color specifically, caught quite a few smallmouth bass. So I do know that these definitely work. It's, uh, you know, on the edge of being a worm style. It does have appendages. I know there's another one or two that are going to be similar in this facet, but it doesn't really fit into the creature style bait either. So we're going to see what that looks like in the tank here in a second. We're also going to look at the Missile Baits Ned Bomb. So these are unique in that they're, you know, the worm style tapering down to this nice flat tail. So this tail is gonna have a ton of added action. 
Also makes a good difference here if we're swimming it, which is an option with Ned Rig Fishing. So you can dead stick it, you can swim it, you can hop it, you can do all sorts of stuff with it. Uh, but specifically, look at that. Today we're just concerned about the action from dead sticking and hopping. We're not gonna do all the stuff in the fish tank. But it, at the very least, you're gonna get an idea of the action these guys have underwater. So look at that. It's a nice little unique tail to it. Speaking of unique tails, we got the Strike King Rage Tail. This is the cut our worm in a watermelon color. So take a look at that. It too has a little bit of a tail, but this tail is unique in that it has the little flanges on the edge. So it's gonna kick a bit more water. It's gonna move a bit more. I think it's gonna look really good. This is uh, actually one of my favorite ones to throw around. I really like this worm. On the more dense plastic side, we've got the Six Sense Fishing Ned Fry. Now, the Ned Fry is actually a longer worm. It's 4.5 inches. It looks like that. So typically, if I'm Ned rigging this on one of my Ned jig heads, I'm gonna cut it. So I usually cut it in half, and now it's gonna look like that. This is in the worm juice color, which is sort of a, a brown, as you can see on the backside, mixed with some watermelon on the front. Good looking color, I really like that for fishing around here. You also have a flat side to this one and a ridge side. So it's a little bit more similar to something like that Lunker Hunt or even a little bit to that Robo Worm, which has a flatter side as well. So we'll see what that does for our action in the water, but there we go, that's the sixth sense. Another entry from Strike King, we've got the KVD Perfect Plastics Ned Ocho Worm, which I also have a video for over on the Monster Bass channel. Go check it out. Got some hot tips on that, but this is a pretty cool worm. It's got a unique shape to it, ridged on both sides, means tons of added action. This is in Moon Juice, which is a cool color. You got like kind of a green pumpkin on one side, and then on this other side, this like flashy blue color, which I like a lot. This thing gets the job done. This is a, one of my favorite worms to be throwing. Then we got this interesting little guy here. So this one has a rattle in it. This is a Yum Bates Ned Worm. Color here is like this green pumpkin. I can't even remember what they call it, like a pickle or something. And white on the back half. And then you can see this little bulbous region here. You can actually pull this out, but there is a little rattle that you can pop into there. A little, little tiny baby rattle. And what you get is you get, when you buy these, you don't get the rattle. You get the worms. You can buy the rattle, or in this case, this rattle came from a Guggenbaits Rattle and Ned. So this is another one we're gonna look at today. So we got the Guggenbaits Rattle and Ned. She's gonna look like this. This is similar to the Strike King Moon Juice. This one's called Moon Cake. Very similar green pumpkin, flashy blue, but it's got these shiny flakes like that electric shiner type of flake on the inside, which really puts off a nice flash. These also have a rattle, right? Same exact rattle that I have in there. You can see on the tip here, you can pull that out of there. You can use it for other purposes as well. It's kind of unique. Um, these are nice durability wise, very suspect. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but when these break down, I usually save these rattles versus tossing the whole thing out. And then I can put them into one of these if it breaks off, or I can put them into the Yum Plastics or something like that. You can find a use for them. Next up, we got X Zone, the Ned Zone. Welcome to the Ned Zone. These are an awesome looking plastic. They've got sort of the tapered to this bulbous end and that like big end of the worm here is gonna have tons and tons of action. So these, these have a lot of action compared to some of the other Ned worms on the market. I think they look really cool. The color is called Minnow Magic. It's sort of this purple and gold flake to it with half of it being like this shiny blue side there. So I think that looks pretty dang good as well. And finally, we got the Z-Man Finesse Turd, the TRD, AKA the real deal. This is my favorite Ned Rig worm of all time, and this is my favorite color to get it in as well. We call this one the Shark Turd. Paul and I, Paul co-hosts Burley Fishing Podcast. Come join us live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. This is the color we throw around the absolute most. It just straight catches fish. I don't know what it is. It's a magic worker. I love it. And this is in that Z-Man Elastec, so we got extra stretchy, extra durable. I have caught literally 50 fish on one of these plastics with one net head in a day, no problem. This is the most durable there is, no questions. 
but pretty fantastic Ned Worm. We're gonna, again, see what all these look like in the water. That's the next step. All right, guys, so let's dunk these bad boys in the tank. I wanna show you what they look like one after another. You guys let me know as we do this in the comments which one you like the most. What ones do you use yourself? What have you seen the most success with? What are your favorite Ned Worms out there on the market? And what are your least favorites? Maybe we hit them all today. Maybe there's some that I missed. I guarantee there are. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. And let's get into the water. All right, guys. So first up, we're going to go Lunker Hunt. Boom. <laughs> there's no action whatsoever. All right, so Lunker Hunt's going to look like a very rigid worm. It's going to be straight up and down. We're going to be relying a lot on just the action of lifting and moving the jig. But this does give you a good idea of what a Ned Rig is going to look like in the water. It's going to sit up nice and straight, just like this. You can pop that rod. This is a, a quarter ounce tungsten, by the way, on this one. Uh, so it's going to fall real fast. Durability on these is okay. Um, they'll last a few fish. They'll definitely fall apart. Um, it's on the lower end of durability and definitely on the lower end of action right now too. So they do make some really nice like finesse minnows, which might be worth it, but I'm not sure the worms honestly are. All right, so here we have the six cents. This is the Ned Fry. Look at that thing. Kind of like the, the tail action on takeoff. Being that it's a little longer than that Lunker Hunt, it can have just a little added flare. Uh, and I think, look at that, standing up. I think throwing this on something a little lighter would look good. Durability wise though, like this is an insanely durable worm. So that really does go a long way. Get action, pretty stiff action. Durability though, pretty great. Here's our Bass Pro Sticko worm. Oh wow. So like I said, I didn't like how skinny this worm was. I think it looks weird on the jig head, but I like that green, like this color looks good. It's pretty, it's got some pretty good action. Look at that. If I were hopping this or swimming it, you could see this worm moving a bit more. So I do like that about it. Not sure on the durability, haven't used these worms too much, but they are, you can't argue with the expense. These are super cheap. For the quantity you get, these are the cheapest worms out of all the ones we're comparing today. So if you're looking to just bang them out, even if they're not durable, this might be your go-to worm. Next up, we got our Strike King Rage Tail. This is that cut R worm. So you notice, look at that. That tail will give you a ton of action. So if you're swimming this, if you're hopping it, it's gonna have a lot more action than the rest of these worms for sure. I do like some of these worms that have that little tapered section. So we got two or three we're reviewing today. So it looks good. Strike King plastics are usually pretty durable. So it's something I can trust. I like it. I can dig it. It's a good variation for sure. All right. Haven't fished this one too much. This is the Robo Worm. Ooh, I already love the action though. Check that out. This thing just looks pretty good. Look at that. I like the color a lot. These guys do have some pretty cool colors. Durability. These are a little less durable, but I do feel at least you're getting the action in place of that durability. So that's where something like that makes sense. I can dig it. Next up's the 10,000 fish Sukoshi bug. Look at that bad boy. So you got the added flare from the appendages up at the top. That's gonna give you a little added action. That's kind of cool. It's got that really stretchy plastic that's, you know, the durability is not the same as a Z-Man. I'll tell you that. Like it's framed up to be, but it just does not compare. I've had these things break apart on me. They're a little more difficult to rig than a Z-Man, uh, which is why they're definitely not in my like top five. Um, but nonetheless, you can't argue it does have good action. It's fairly inexpensive. You got a Carl's Club bait and tackle membership. You can get these for basically free. Um, so it's not all in all, not bad. And I do like the colors that they offer as well. Next up's the Missile Baits Ned Bomb. I almost said D-bomb. D-bomb is a, another plastic they make that I love. It's like a beaver style bait, but check this out. That tail, it's probably got the best tail out of all of the tail style worms we're looking at today. Look at that. That's phenomenal. So that's gonna give you some good action. I do like the colorways that they offer with this bait. They got some pretty cool colors. 
decently durable. They'll definitely hold up. And a cool thing about this worm is they actually make a longer worm as well, like a five inch model of this. So you can vary this one up. Just like with Z-Man, you've got the, the finesse turd, the big turd, the giant turd. So you've got a few options. This one also comes in a few different sizes. So not bad at all. All right, so here we have the Yum, which has the optional rattle. They don't come with it. You can add one in. So you guys can sort of hear that rattle when I lift up. A little, little, little bit of rattle. Doesn't sound too bad. Colors, I don't like the colors that these guys offer, honestly. None of them really appeal to me. Um, not that it's for me, it's for bass, obviously, but I just haven't had any luck. This one is like avocado-ish color. It's a very strange color. Um, don't have a lot of great options. This one in particular, you can buy these individually or in their own packs, but this one I got in a three pack, which included a fish style Ned, which is my absolute least favorite Ned plastic of all time and a cross style Ned, which is all right, but not durable. And then this worm. So durability, not good on these. Um, they are super cheap. So you can get like the Ned 15 pack with, like I said, the fish, don't like it. The craw, not durable. And this worm with no rattles. So you've got, yeah, you, you got some options. Um, definitely kind of bottom of my list as far as all these baits we're looking at today though. So then we got the X zone Ned zone. Look at that. So this, again, it doesn't have a flat tail, but it's got like that bulbous tail on the end, which gives you a ton of action because sort of the weight of the plastic is gonna kick it around more. Even just popping this thing in place, you get a lot of movement there. Look at that thing. This one, I love the look of this one. It is one of my favorites, maybe not top five, but it's definitely up there. Um, I do like these plastics. They're pretty durable. They got a lot of action you can't argue with it and they're not too expensive either. So definitely a great Ned rig option. All right. So another striking, here's that Ned Ocho. This cut, look at the color and the light. That looks so good. So this one's got some pretty good action. Look at that little, little movement, right? For a denser worm, I think it has great action. It's a lot more durable. This one will last a decent number of fish for you. Just looks, gosh dang, gorgeous. Look at that thing. Look, even just swimming it, you're gonna get a bit more action there too. You can kind of just shake this thing in place. It looks good. Brings us to the Guggen Squad. So here we have the Guggen Baits, Rattle and Ned. It's got some okay action. Here's the, the main problem I have with this one a lot is it's one that won't really sit up straight very well. It's probably the hardest when you have the rattle, mind you, like that rattle kind of tips it over. Again, it's not a very durable plastic. This plastic tends to fall apart a lot on me, but the color looks great. I mean, look at the flash on that color. Now we're gonna try something. So hang on, I'm gonna pull the rattle out of this one. Oftentimes I've complained about this thing not standing upright. And then I get some feedback of, hey, pull the rattle out. It's now a silent Ned and it should stand up better. So let's see. So no rattle. Okay. Bit better. It's supposedly you're supposed to have like less weight. Obviously there's no rattle in there and then an air bubble, hopefully helping it stay up. I don't know. Kind of disagree. I mean, I fish this in the river, so I honestly don't care if it stands up. I'm just hucking it into riprap rocks and disgusting log jams um, with a weedless Ned rig setup and getting bit by smallies. So I guess it doesn't matter, but if you're fishing this in a lake, just heads up, it's not going to exactly perform the same way that most Ned rigs do. This is definitely better than with the rattle in it, but I, I, I'm pretty sure you buy it for the rattle. So I don't, I don't know. Need some more buoyancy in the plastic, I think. It's just something we could work on. Z-Man. So this is hands down my favorite. You've got pretty decent action on this thing. You can prep these before dunking them in the water by stretching the plastic out as much as possible. And that helps with the buoyancy and with the action. And that can help it just look better in the water. So check this thing out. Pretty good action. I think most likely what helps me get bit is that this color looks amazing in stained water. Um, so I get a lot of bites that way. 
And then maybe I just spend less time re-rigging because the dang thing lasts forever. This thing is absolutely phenomenal. Highly recommend if you haven't fished with it before, do it. I know these things look dumb, but they catch dang fish. Finally, we got our rabid baits, foxtail. So I'm gonna dunk this guy in the tank. There we go. All right, so right away you're gonna see that fox fur. Look at that. Let's just move it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. If you're swimming this thing, hopping this thing, it's gonna look great. Even just sitting still. And this isn't a still tank, no aerator, but imagine now if you have like current in a river, look at that, even without any current, it's kind of moving a little bit. With current, with moving it around, with wind, it's gonna look phenomenal. So that's naturally gonna be moving. This thing, like I'm saying, it excels in open water conditions, sitting still on the bottom. Just dead stick this thing and it's gonna look great. It will draw bites. You are gonna get bit on this thing. Um, plastic is very finessey plastic. You're sacrificing durability for action. Keep that in mind. Don't huck this up into the dirty rip wraps and lay downs and all that. Um, but you will get fish. You can also optionally drop shot this. This looks pretty phenomenal on a drop shot. All right, you guys, so there you have it. You've seen them all in action. Let me know what you think. Again, hit me up in the comments. Which one do you think looked the best, the worst? Which one do you use to catch some dang hogs in your own home waters? And let me give you real quick kind of my power ranking. Now this is based off of my experience. This is my opinion, obviously. Uh, and this applies to the waters I fish. So I fish here in Michigan, we're in the upper Midwest, and I fish colder water than maybe you boys and girls down south, all right? So it's a little bit different, but what works best for me up here, absolute, already told you this, number one, Z-Man in this copper truce color. So this is the shark turd, as we like to call it. And this thing just gosh dang bangs. This thing's amazing. That's my number one. My number two favorite is the Rabid Baits. This thing is absolutely phenomenal. It is not nearly as durable as the Z-Man's, but it has an amazing appeal with the fur. This thing stands out. It is so different and unique from everything else that's out there. I absolutely love it. You can't compete. Plastic cannot compete with the action that you get out of this fur, hands down. So that's amazing. I think it, it really excels in like open water conditions. It's something that I love throwing around. It's phenomenal. Next up, I gotta go with the Strike King KVD Perfect Plastics, that Ned Ocho. This thing has decent durability. It's got good action. It comes in great colors and it's really like price point, not terrible for how many you get. You're getting uh, nine in a pack. So you get a decent quantity there um, and it's easy to rig. I don't know, what else can I say? It catches fish, it's good. It's solid. Next up, I'm actually gonna throw the oddball in the mix here. So we got the Six Sense Ned Fry, the biggest worm that we reviewed today. And the reason it's in here is that it's more versatile than the rest. You're not gonna Texas rig any of these other plastics. It just wouldn't work. You're maybe at, at most you're gonna drop shot them. You can drop shot this too if you want to. Uh, you can Tokyo rig that and it looks friggin' good. You're not gonna Tokyo rig the rest of these. So I like the Ned Fry because it excels in so many more situations. I can Ned rig it if I cut it down to size and I can adjust it to whatever size I want. You're kind of stuck with uh, the Ocho, for example, is this size, unless you get their Ocho worm in like five or six inches and cut that down, that is an option too. You can use a Sanko, of course, but even compared to Sankos, this is one of my favorite worms. I think it's just super durable, super dense. It's easy to cast weightless even. Uh, so it just gives me so many more options than most of these other Ned worms. So it's in there. It's gotta be in that power ranking. That's my power rankings on the Ned worms. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. If you're interested in more information on this, again, I have made a plethora of videos on Ned rigs. So go back in the channel. We've got how to use a Ned rig. We've got everything you need to know about a Ned rig on this channel. Way back in the day on the Monster Bass channel, I did sort of the all encompassing video of Ned rigs. And then recently I did one on the Strike King Ned Ocho, which is pretty solid. So you can go check that out on the Monster Bass YouTube channel. 
Again, hopefully you guys enjoyed the content. If you did, be sure to subscribe, smash a like, ring that notification bell. I want to see you on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern. Come hang out with me and my buddy Paul on the live Burly Fishing Podcast on YouTube or Twitch. It'd be amazing to talk to you in chat. So until next time, I'll see you guys out on the water.